So iron ten. He is Russian. Oh, it's TTF. It's part of AE. It's also on Team Ash. He's actually a very good player. Although he's been kind of out of the scene for a while. It's like he's just gotten back into it. <clears throat> All right. Hey, Yeski. Hey, Goramont. Yeah, I'm actually, you know, I'm, I'm managing. I'm doing pretty well, actually, right this second. Had a good day yesterday, I think. Having a good morning. A little of a rushed morning, but not a bad morning this morning. Let's do it. <clears throat> Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity, upper left-hand corner. We have Iron Terran, who is actually TTF, who uh, is part of Team Ash. He has just gotten back playing. I th think he was pretty active in like the 2010 to 2012 era. Very good player. We'll expect to see him in somewhere in either... I'm not sure if he goes up to the Gosu League level, but I'm expecting to see him somewhere in the upper levels of BSL. Upper right-hand corner, we have Dreamer, also on Team Ash, so kind of an inter clan match. This is going to be on Revolver, which I'll do a quick highlight of. I believe this is going to be BSL map. You've got the two eggs, which have become a popular thing on the ramp, so you can, so it's kind of a narrow ramp, which I believe is like double wide, technically, uh, leading down, but the eggs can open it up, make it wider, and this is really the critical thing, is a weird kind of double natural expansion, where yeah, you can have attacks coming from the north, but you can see where it ends up with split attacks, and I feel like the aspect of this natural expansion is mostly to disrupt 973 Hydra Busts more than anything because you end up with a little bit of a, a too few Hydralisks to get good spread to attack from the south and from the north, same deal. You're kind of coming from an odd angle. Also, randomly mineral piles right there. Oftentimes, this expansion is the third that's taken depending on your opponent's location. There's also another expansion here at the 3 o'clock base kind of with the odd split mineral pile where you've got the minerals to the north and the south and the gas just sitting at the cardinal direction. And then on either side of the north and south, you have you know expansions on either side of the map. So when it comes to split map situations, uh, you can see kind of the challenges there. Also, you got the ramps across the, kind of the middle areas across the board. And so, uh, yeah, could be, it'll be an interesting one. We'll see. And I think it's definitely gonna force players, looks like we're seeing a 12 Nexus to start from Dreamer opposite side we are seeing a front door seal from TTF. Um, actually, just call him Iron Terran from here on out, and I'll debate. But he did go for a refinery, it looks like, very, very rapidly. So he wants to pot potentially, that suggests, he's thinking about an early factory rush. Let's see if Dreamer gets that scout, and he is going to get... This is a four-player map, so he is going to end up sneaking in this space, which is fortunate for him. He's going to be able to get eyes, so the probe making its way up. Looks like the SEV scout equivalently is going to spot this 12 Nexus. And fortunately for TTF... Getting this early gas and having these SCVs in here is going to get it, put him in a place where he can mount some sort of response. So I'm not sure if Dreamer actually wandered up and saw that gas or not. Initially popping in, seeing that initial marine, I think he did go up and see that refinery. It looks like actually TTF pulling back and opting to just... So rather than going for a factory push, it looks like what he's going to opt to do instead is he's pulling... Are you kidding me? He's pulling six SCVs now with this Marine. Now this is a rush I've not seen. So immediately taking off, let's see if Dreamer is gonna spot this. One factory in production, looks like some probes are making their way towards the natural expansion now that that Nexus is up. So it's gonna be, we are gonna see the battle probe fight. I chose the right replay. Special thanks to Dreamer for getting me this replay, by the way. Marine making its way out. The So it's gonna be two gates, but will it be enough? And are, are there going to be additional Marines? So there's a factory and additional Marines that are going to pull out from this. So the SCV is now starting to attack. No bunker being built just yet. The probes coming off the line. There's that bunker being constructed. Are the SCVs going to be able to get in between to provide the blockade though? So it's going to be probe battle probes versus battle SCVs. I love to see it. Second Marine now in the grouping. First sell it making its way down. That bunker nearly constructed, however. 
SCV taking some damage, more pros pulling off the line. And it looks like the Marines on the left side of that bunker never got boxed out, so that is going to go up. That Nexus now taking a lot of fire. The SCV is returning home to repair. Looks like another battle SCV was like, I want to get part of this action. One probe down there, but this Nexus most certainly going to get taken out. A Dragoon being produced. Looks like Dreamer in a lot of trouble as far as the early game. So he's going to lose this Nexus, certainly. He's going to end up losing control of his natural expansion. It looks like behind this TTF already has his machine shop building, so he can feel comfortable going, grabbing his natural. And actually, I take it back. Two Zealots and a Dragoon on the low ground. Only three Marines in his bunker. The SEV is getting targeted to prevent repair. And Dreamer... Uh, that Dragoon eating a lot of damage, sneaking out otherwise. He need, uh, TTF needs to hurry up and take this Nexus down. With these gateway units being produced, it looks like Dreamer spotting now. He's going to go ahead and grab... So Nexus taken out. I was like, is he going to be able to save this? No. The answer is no. SCV now moving in. Nothing going right for Dreamer off the bat. Range being upgraded, so he's now in two-gate robo as an effective build. TTF has not yet taken his natural expansion. But with this Vulture, he should easily be able to do so. Because that Zealot, not long for life... And this Dragoon, without range and low on, uh, has already taken a, a good degree of base health. Plus that machine shop and mines uh, pouring out. He should easily be able to get some map control. Plus he has this bunker that can spot any additional Dragoons pouring out of this base to do additional damage. So it's up to TTF when he wants to go ahead and take this command center. It looks like he's opting to do so now. The Dragoon's still kind of circling around this bunker, looking for an opportunity to take it out. And that Vulture actually sneaking up and able to get a mine down as well. Wow. Dreamer in a lot of trouble here. Interesting mine placement. And the Vulture actually trying to... Just mocking. I like that, the, that this is great play from TTF. Also pegging away at that Dragoon. Taking some of that shield down, trying to bait it into those mines. Range is finished. This is an overwhelming amount of Dragoons. And honestly, at this stage, I would just expect TTF to evacuate the bunker and take off. Looks like he's leaving one Marine in to allow the others to escape. It looks like, oh, unfortunately, because of Revolver, some of them pathing to the north. So those two Marines to the north are going to get taken out. One does take the correct path, and he is going to be able to exit. But with that robotics facility, I actually went Reavers before Observer. So this natural expansion is still going to be some trouble to take. Now TTF setting up a bunker on his side of the map. Looking for some siege tanks out of this. Still no siege tanks, mostly just... This actually might end up... Okay, he has a single siege tank, but he's got kind of a skeleton crew. Just a single siege tank, only a handful of vultures to go ahead and try to defend against what is going to be an incoming uh, reaver attack eventually. The Dragoon making its way to the north. Single siege tank there, pushing that off. One mine in between all of that, and that tank getting a little bit greedy, pushing off and going to go ahead and pull back. But that Nexus now finally going up. But way, way, way behind TTF's point of play. TTF actually, look, I think he paused SCV production somewhere in the midst of that. Looks like he's getting an engineering bay behind this, trying to respect the Dark Templar. Also needs those turrets in place. But two Zealots and a Reaver moving in across the north. And there's not a lot that TTF has to defend this. He's got one siege tank there. A second siege tank might be here momentarily. But honestly, two, two Zealots and a, a Reaver wipe this out. Cancellation on the front. So TTF and ju this turret is not going to be up in time. Sieging on the low ground. But finally one siege tank there. Dreamer gets a handful of SCV kills. Just two. Zelt's wandering and they're going to be able to take that turret out. So maybe Dreamer can swing. Oh. Whew. Sneeze commentary. Ugh. Maybe able to sneak things up and even things out economically. At least slow Iron Terran down a bit. The Zelt's actually getting in the action. The Vulture taken out, and finally the two Siege Tanks able to group up. But keep in mind, this is still actually a nice mind drag. Oh, and another beautiful mind drag into the Siege Tanks. Marines grouping up to try to deal with that turret. They're trying not to get baited into their own mine. But Dreamer's done a fantastic job of doing some great economic harassment after losing that Nexus. And this Reaver's still alive, still getting damage. I want to get a kill count here. One, uh, for a moment... Some mines being planted on the low ground. That marine chasing back around. It looks like this shuttle, the shuttle also going to be able to escape with its life. So not only was Dreamer able to do a lot of economic harassment, he's also able to exit with that Reaver and that shuttle. His natural expansion now up. And I believe that evened things up 
He's at 28 probes. He's still sitting a little bit behind as far as the raw production count because he's just got those two gateways. But I'm wondering if he's going to go ahead and try to sneak that third, particularly looking at how low TTF's uh, siege tank count is. I don't. I also, critically, I don't see an armory. I don't see any push towards weapon one. So TTF, despite the really fantastic early game pressure, is not turning it around into a sizable economic advantage. And it looks like Dreamer has an immense amount of Dragoons. Where not only does he have map control, not only could he go ahead and take a third, maybe even a fourth, honestly, off the map control that he possesses, but he could maybe even go ahead and deny a third or do some threat at TTF's natural expansion. Dreamer up in supply, ahead in probes. It looks like he is going to go ahead and grab that three o'clock base. A single vulture making its way out. The observer already in position to go ahead and clear those mines. So Dreamer with an, a wonderful recovery off losing his natural expansion. And it looks like it is going to, in fact, turn into a match. Citadel of Adun warping down. There's his forge as well. Critically on TTF's side of the map, this is a an armory that, at practically the 10-minute mark. And that's the armory for weapons one. And I usually, if that's the case, what you've seen, you've seen more factories down and a vulture harass uh, somewhere out in the field, something along those lines. But it feels like this is coming very, very late. And he's just a step behind Dreamer now, all of a sudden. Dragoons making their way up to that 12 o'clock location. I'm wondering if Dreamer is actually even going to opt to go ahead and take uh, two bases, to go up two bases over his opponent, a simulator uh, warping in. One critical thing, though, is Dreamer is lacking grabbing the additional gateways to really capitalize. He's gone mostly tech, although it's really, as far as the supply count, hasn't hurt him. Uh, Vulture making its way to that 3 o'clock location is going to spot that that, in fact, is in place. Might be able to take out that probe. Very nice snipe. Cannon's still going to warp in. I don't know that there's... I don't think there's enough Vultures, period. So just getting done... I, I gotta give it to TTF. Getting something done with kind of the skeleton crew he's got. Four factories up, two machine shops. He is getting a Goliath and Charm booster because he's still concerned about additional Reaver attacks. He's going to grab a additional third. I assume he's going to try to take this base. The Observer is already in place to go ahead and spot that when that comes. What le Level 1 weapons on the way, but this, this is like the 11-minute mark. Usually when you see some sort of timing attack pushing out for a Terran. And Level 1 weapons is not even in place. And as far as upgrades go, it looks like Dreamer is actually going to have Level 1 weapons himself. And not too long, feeling very comfortable grabbing this Stargate and making his way, I assume, to Arbiter Tech as far as a, a follow-up. Dragoon starting to flood their way out, clear things out. Dreamer only really needs to suppress these Vultures out in the field, and he should be in good position. I'm looking for... So, yeah, starting to move mid-map, starting to get some of that vision. He saw some of those units peek out to the north with that Observer. It looks like the Vultures are going to be able to sneak out into this natural expansion. Kind of the advantage of Revolver with that... Kind of dual entrance and the vultures able to get in the main there is a cannon there i like that dreamer did place this cannon preventatively but he's still going to end up losing it looks like a handful of probes in the midst of this that's drawing that shuttle back so ttf able to get i'm not sure if that paid off actually so he got three probes and ended up losing three vultures and critically not a lot of mines and this is a big army of dragoons and zealots that is starting to march midfield dreamer's still up in supply he has that shuttle as well TTF now moving out. Looks like you see that Observer seeing this command center moving out. I do not believe that Dreamer is in a situation where he can really go up and harass that third base. But because of just the oddity of Revolver and this natural expansion, TTF pushing up with a grouping. His tanks not siege. The Dragoons walking into it. The Zealots getting forward. The shuttles taken out overhead between the Goliaths and everything else. And the Dragoons walking up the ramp the tank sieging in that back corner looks like they're briefly getting interrupted on that forward turret but i think dreamer is going to end up losing the rest of these dragoons scv's pulling off the line mind drag killing a huge amount of scvs and a tank if it was not for that mind drag honestly i feel like that would have been a huge advantage to ttf as far as unit trade turret's gonna maintain but because of that mind drag ends up losing several scvs in a siege tank Meantime, Dreamer is backed off. He does have this Vulture that's just kind of camping that bottom right. I'm not sure if it took out a probe there or not. But TTF, yeah, not Siege Dups. Redefending, regrouping, more SCVs transferring to this 3 o'clock base. So now it's turning into essentially 3 base Terran versus 3 base Protoss. It's going to be up to Dreamer to follow this up. He is moving an undefended probe to that bottom right-hand corner. TT, this... 
is critical, actually. So uh, the Observer critically sees that Vulture, so it's going to sneak back. And TTF getting aggressive. Again, he's just leaving nothing to defend at home. Absolutely nothing to defend at home. Moving Siege Tanks forward and occupying this 1 o'clock base. <clears throat> and I'm wondering if he's... And he's starting to siege forward. Is he going to go for a contain? I feel like this is a difficult map to seal this sort of contain on. And he's not doing it with an immense amount of siege tanks. But Dreamer, about even on supply. So it might end up paying off. We do have an Arbiter that's just about to warp in. It does not have stasis, so we'll have to see the timing of all this. A turret being placed. And you can see, just because of, yeah, a small containment area, this might pay off for TTF. But the Zealot's able to get on top of the siege tanks, forcing their own splash damage. It looks like Dreamer is going to be able to clean this up. And this was with Zealots without leg speed. And I'm not sure how much of this was just a nice engagement from Dreamer, and how much of this was just too few and too and too much of an immaneuverable area for TTF to kind of push through. And honestly, this is a very greedy take. He still has very little to defend at home. And he's lucky that Dreamer's not being more aggressive. Dreamer managed to clear out that Vulture in that bottom right corner. He's going to go ahead and move up to his fourth base. Looks like he's got eight gateways down. He has that single Stargate. First Arbiter is out in the field. We level one weapons is up. He's starting to go for that double upgrades. Kind of unusual these days to see this, but it looks like Dreamer is going to be able to match the uh, upgrade advantage. Starting to clear those eggs to make that ramp a little bit more maneuverable and start fielding units. That's actually the other aspect I didn't think about with Revolver is because of this dual map kind of artifact and kind of the wide area, it becomes difficult to defend outside of those three bases. Single Vulture going to go ahead and check out that 1 o'clock location. It looks like some more Vulture streaming through. 9 o'clock base being taken. Very vulnerable. And this TTF was just hoping this wasn't get scouted, but there's that observer overhead. So Zealots rushing to that location. This is going to have to be a cancel. And DTF playing this very, very greedily and very, very thin. This is honestly, I think, uh, some of the more greedy play I've seen out of a Terran. But while that's happening, the Vultures have poured into this base in that bottom right hand corner. And it looks like, well, are they going to be able to get the probes? It looks like they're able to get one cannon down. They're working on a second cannon. But while they're doing that, they're getting wiped out. And Missing a bit of a probe transfer. So a bit of an opportunity missed because of a lack of micro. And Dreamer able to sneak back and defend. So TTF missing an opportunity there. Mind drag not even... I'm not sure if that even... Did that damage that zealot? Looks like it did damage that zealot. There are more siege tanks and vultures going ahead and positioned across that third, that natural expansion. Just with that mine, I guess he's just relying on the ability to redefend. And I'm wondering if this has to do with the architecture. What if he's just going to take out this egg right here and leave that egg intact? And then you can essentially try to defend, I guess, two areas at once. Dreamer sitting with a significant economic advantage. He's up a lot of supply, filling in with Dragoons. I'm looking for a second Stargate at this stage of things. Clearing out, moving up to that 1 o'clock base. By taking this 1 o'clock base, he can be, first of all, more aggressive, but also kind of keep a, deny an additional base to TTF. TTF sitting at three bases. His main actually still looking pretty, pretty decent uh, the question is, is when can he get his fourth? Is he just going to try to sit back and go for the 200-200 supply? Right now, he wants to try to slow his opponent down. Observer able to sneak out of that corner. The Vultures are able to sneak out of the map. But here's the thing. A lot of these Vultures that have been able to get on the map prior to this have not really capitalized. An Arbiter moving in. Are we going to see a recall? Arbiter getting wiped out before it's able to do anything. I don't think recall was, in fact, upgraded. A Siege Tank on the low ground. And again, TTF just relying. And this is why yeah, he's happy with such a skeleton force to go ahead and defend this because Dragoon's having to walk up into this base through this corner just get plastered with just a small grouping so Dreamer gonna go ahead and back off so it looks like it's heavily defense this almost the more I look at this map I'm like is this just straight up Terran favor is that what it is about this map anyway there's a drop ship in play with two siege tanks that's gonna make this bottom right hand base somewhat vulnerable Another expansion is warping in there. Some vultures sneaking out to go ahead and get some spotting information. They're being engaged by Dragoons. I like what Dreamer's been doing with his vision throughout this map. You can just see how he's had all of these all of these expansions spotted, and that's going to allow him to see... Wow, that was great timing. Uh, that's going to allow him to see this dropship moving out. And he's trying to grab another expansion where he's hoping Dreamer just won't see it to get back in this match. And once again, these three vultures are not going to be able to defend it. And unfortunately for him, he also lured a lot of these troops right to his command center with this dropship and I'm wondering if he's is he going to angle this dropship back around no and now this arbiter is going to be led right over this five o'clock location 
So that's going to get wiped out. Dragoons and Zealots in position to engage this dropship as it's making its way across. So nothing going right for TTF right now. Some vultures being engaged right there. Is the dropship even going to escape with its life? So the command center wiped out. Dropship making its way to the middle of the map. At least that will get back to home base. In the meantime, level 2 weapons, level 1 armor is online. I think TTF is just going to have to be content to get towards 200-200 supply and play the game from there. But it's kind of an inversion at that stage of the match where how is he going to... He'll need to blast these eggs, but he's got... It's difficult if Dreamer's in position with a lot of size Storm, with a lot of Stasis, to get out of his three-base situation. Granted, he can try to exit from the north, but as long as there's decent observer coverage, he's very much sealed in, and it can be difficult to break out. Gateway count now at 10, still at just a single Stargate. Opposite side of the map, we've got, looks like, seven factories, three machine shops placed, do have that double armory working. The main is starting to look thin. The natural expansion is starting to thin out as well. Both players getting towards the 200 supply mark. Dreamer hitting 200 supply first. Grouped up to that 1 o'clock location. Mostly wants to deny it. Science Vessel in position. TTF trying to slowly move up to this area. I actually wonder how High Templar are going to play out. And again, TTF being super greedy. Trying to once again take this base while Dreamer is distracted in that bottom left-hand corner. Dreamer critically needs to stop TTF from moving across this northern expansion because it's a hop, skip, and a step from here as well into his natural, at which point he gets sealed in. Nice defense matrix on the top. Arbiter moving in. Does not have enough energy for his stasis. Several Zelts and Dragoons trying to come in from the low ground. Looks like the Zelts are once again able to get on top of the siege tanks. Nice movement from Dreamer. But it looks like there are two pockets of siege tanks, and those siege tanks are starting to really chew in to that Dragoon line from the south. More siege tanks on that back corner are going to force Dreamer back to his side of the map. Going to regroup and re-engage. Mines along the way. The Zealot is able to drag that out of the way. The Arbiter able to stasis some of the siege tanks on the low ground. And the Dragoon's continuing to press forward. they got to attack... I'm not sure if this ends up being a misfire chance or not. I do not believe so. But those siege tanks just again obliterating the Dragoons from a distance position. And Dreamer now with not much of an army going to have to seed this 1 o'clock base. So initially a very good engagement. But with the follow-up reinforcements and map positioning, TTF starting to establish control of this 1 o'clock location, which is again going to be critical. But also critical, he snuck some bases here in this bottom left-hand corner. An observer sees it. I don't know if Dreamer is going to have the troops to go ahead and engage that though, as TTF is moving towards his natural expansion. Some more Zelts, some more Dragoons out, but critically I don't see a lot of Arbiters, I don't see High Templar or other units to real. and I really feel like High Templar have got to be a critical component on this map. Siege Tanks, very very, looks like a probe getting caught behind enemy lines, mostly providing scouting information. Some Zealots and some Dragoons making their way mid-map. I'm wondering if they're just going to try to assault this here, bottom left-hand corner, or if they're just going to cycle back around, try to force these units back. Two Siege Tank, several Mines right there. And the Mines, practically Mines alone, clearing all these Zealots, but it looks like it is enough to go ahead and make it through. Some Dragoons eating a Mine Drag right there. TTF quickly reinforcing from that 3 o'clock base. That's going to send those Dragoons home, and a counterattack from TTF into that natural expansion. There is an Arbiter there, but again, does not have Stasis Energy. And actually, without the Science Vessel right there, TTF having to initially turn around. So, a bit of luck on Dreamer's part, because he could have ended up getting sealed into his natural expansion right there if it wasn't for the Arbiter and a lack of detection overhead. The Siege Tanks now turning back around. TTF getting very greedy with expanding, trying to expand absolutely everywhere simultaneously. The Dragoons cycling from the south, several of them getting taken out. You can just see how the map feature is really working against Dreamer and his ability to engage and reinforce. So, this base bottom left has been taken out. However, the 5 o'clock location is, or I guess this is the 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock is open. More gateways have been planted for Dreamer in the bottom right. He's going to try to play Gorilla Toss at this stage. I think he's worried about his ability to contain this bottom right-hand base. He does have expansions right there. The Zelts again getting on top of those siege tanks. And you can see where that level 3 armor and having that upgrade difference has really played a big difference. Instead of just melting that Protoss army where it had absolutely no upgrades... 
EMP could be a factor for TTF, but basically I feel like the upgrades are allowing Dreamer to get more out of his Zelts in particular and keep this natural expansion clearer so he can stay alive, basically keep from being sealed in. However, in the midst of this, the natural expansion is, or sorry, the main and natural expansion are empty for TTF, but he is mining here at the 1 o'clock and 12 o'clock locations. Dreamer assaulting once again. Great mine placement for TTF. A defense matrix on the front. The Dragoons trying to come in from the right. Looks like the Dragoons and Zelts are going to be able to get there from the left, but there's so many siege tanks to push the rest of this back. Dreamer desperately wants to evict, get rid of this 1 o'clock base. Looks like a dropship managed to sneak in. I'm not sure if there's anything in that or not. Kind of missed that. But as things stand, we've got three base Terran, if you count this bottom right, versus what is soon to be two base Protoss. So Dreamer in a spot of trouble. Although Dreamer doing a pretty good job macroing, it looks like he has a decent bank. His natural expansion just about uh, to filter out. Some vultures trying to find their way to the five o'clock. Maybe wipe that base out. And I think they're going to be able to get it done before that army. And actually with this army out of position, Dreamer might be in a spot of trouble because that might allow TTF to proceed, kind of regroup and press in that natural expansion. Also, he needs to be careful not to move these vultures back to that 5 o'clock location because otherwise he's going to lead them back to his exposed, undefended natural expansion. And so now this natural expansion has been spotted. Yeah, the SCV's just fleeing. The Dra Dragoon's pressing in. And so this expansion's certainly going to get taken out. Oh, vultures... But while that's happening, TTF is going to seize this opportunity to move into that natural expansion. Some probes trying to exit. They're getting plastered from siege fire. Just several of them are going to survive. But while that army is completely at the 6 o'clock location, Dreamer is going to end up losing his main potentially. He's going for a counterattack. Wants to dive into that 11 o'clock base. Some Goliaths are there with the mines. The siege tanks trying to find a location to go ahead and siege up. This is a sizable army. More siege tanks and vultures are going to group up to defend this. Dreamer does have a supply advantage, but I feel like he has a disadvantage as far as the territory that he's got to walk into. So yeah, pulling back there, his natural expansion is now covered. Looks like there's an Arbiter overhead. Let's see if some Goliaths can get there to go ahead and wipe that out. Two Goliaths in the middle of the map getting greedy. I guess they're just going to sacrifice their lives. One thing for Dreamer, though, is that 3 o'clock base, even though it's, it's out has given him a lot of minerals to work with. He's got basically the he's completely moved to the bottom right quadrant of the map. He has managed to get three bases established down here. TTF is now with the the loss of that five o'clock base is basically down to one base. However, he's got this positional advantage where he's starting to move into the gateways, which is going to force Streamer to utilize a lot of those minerals to rebuild. It looks like he's already done so though. He's got seven gateways, eight gateways in the bottom right. Let's see if he can get the rest of his tech establish their bottom right in the form of Stargates and Arbiters as well. So TTF slowly going to have to dedicate a handful of troops to go ahead and wipe out everything that's here in the upper right. If he can do that and defend, he'll be in a decent position. We'll see if he can go ahead and get additional bases and hold them as well. Dreamer just walking up that ramp with these Dragoons. Siege tanks on the left. They no longer have that low ground advantage. We do have High Templar. Great Psy Storm on that front line of Siege Tanks and that back line wiping them out. And that's before the Zealots were even engaging. The Zealots able to get there. So this base is going to get wiped out. Mostly that's just going to be a supply cost, however. Because it looks like this is... Oh man, SEVs getting stormed. No battle SEVs this time. You're going to eat lightning from the sky. The Zealots able to get to that lower line. And with this attack, it has turned into... A battle fest absolutely everywhere. So this 11 o'clock base being assaulted. This 12 o'clock base needs to be defended. However, this base is getting wiped out from Dreamer. But he's completely re-maneuvered to this bottom right-hand corner. He's pouring units out of there. So if he can continue to press up. If Dreamer can continue to macro. He currently has a significant supply lead. Continuing to size storm. He just is pissed at these SCVs. How dare you. How dare you. Units all over the map. TTF remaneuvering with actually a battle SCV himself in line to go ahead and wipe out this bottom right hand corner. It looks like another expansion being taken from Dreamer at the five o'clock. There is action happening all over the map. I'll try to track it for you. So there's the slow destruction here and Arbiter wiping things out. I'm waiting for Goliath to get there. That Arbiter being the stalwart hero. 
truly living up to its name as an Arbiter. The Dragoons repositioning some Archons have been morphed. They're starting to move in. There was a recall, it looks like, to disrupt that 11 o'clock base. That was TTF's last mining base. So he's having to evacuate. So he's got to get it done with what's in his bank. And that might have been the killing blow right there. 5 o'clock base. Or I guess this is 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock base being assaulted. This might get wiped out. However, there's still a natural expansion in a main in that bottom right-hand corner, which are being mined by Dreamer. Still a sizable army. Let's see if this army can move back around and wipe things out. Now, here's the problem for TTF. So he's starting to move vultures out to try to deal with some of these expansions. It looks like two siege tanks are going to find this base. Should be able to take out these cans before that's in place. So if TTF can somehow, with what he's got on the ground, he's only got 300 minerals approximately, give or take 10, uh, in his bank, to keep Dreamer from getting an additional expansion up, from for, to get an expansion up himself and start mining again, and to basically hold Dreamer back. If Dreamer can just continue to macro up, get a cohesive army, and swat down everything that's that TTF kind of has out in position, he'll end up winning this match. And it looks like the first thing he's going to do is try to rescue his former main to preserve, it looks like, these Stargates. So those siege tanks getting taken out. Science Vessel fleeing from that location. Is he going to... Now the question is, does Dreamer go ahead and attack that 9 o'clock location, or does he swat this army? This is forcing TTF to reposition. I think he realizes this has been spotted. He's trying to... It's a race to go ahead and get to that 9 o'clock base. It looked like some Zealots and Dragoons are assaulting this as they're making their way across. The Dragoons backing off. Some mines being planted. Some vultures there as well. Arbiter does have energy to potentially drop a stasis behind this. Unfortunately, that Arbiter getting wiped out, it does get a stasis on some of these siege tanks in the main. The SCDs can push these siege tanks around. But more units from Dreamer starting to pour in. That's a lot of stasis that was dropped. Unfortunately, it's protecting those northern siege tanks, but it's also forcing TTF to go ahead and lift off that command center. He's backing off there. And Dragoons and Archons are on top of the rest of this army, and that should be GG, even though this Nexus is being taken out in the bottom left. What a great game. So the bottom left-hand base being wiped out. 9 o'clock base. This should get wiped out. And Iron Terran down to just 300 supply. TTF not completely out of this yet. He's still, well, I don't know. I think he, this is going to be it. So he's un, unstasis. That's gone. He still can hold up here. There's GG. I was like, maybe he yeah, can build. I, I thought he had something... The thought was, uh, he's, he's got four, four SCVs. Great game. Fun match. I'm going to go back to the final moments. And mostly to talk about... He can still win, guys. He already GG'd, but he, he can still get this. He can still do it. To people in live chat. What I almost wonder about on this map... This is a nice preview of Revolver overall. Bernie can still win. Um, looking at chat now. Is I'm wondering almost how much... Uh, if Terran can... I thought he had like a secondary army waiting back here, which he did not. Um, had everything committed to the front. You can see where Revolver is going to turn into a really interesting match. Because it seems like Terran and I guess the defensive players can, they can defend around these three bases. But at that stage, getting out on the map is a great difficulty, and the very things that allowed players to defend end up being a liability. Yeah? So I, I'm actually excited to see Revolver in this BSL map pool, and I think it's going to result in some interesting matches. I think it's going to be particularly difficult for Zerg, though, because of the lack of ability to execute on that 973 build. But anyway, special thanks to Dreamer for getting me this really fantastic match. Luck for both him and Iron Terran, a.k.a. TTF in BSL Season 13, which is already, I believe it's underway as of today for the live stream. Um, and I'm really excited to, hopefully I'll have BSL like proper ladder replays for you next week. We're gonna jump into some Continental Wars from here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.